Hey friends, this is Jim here with Science Talk. Um, I want to share with you this uh, public this little article that appeared on the online publication EOS. And it states, planting wetlands could help stave off climate catastrophe. A shift in priority and approach to wetland restoration could reduce atmospheric carbon. So what are they getting at here? And this is a photo wetland with some meandering uh, waterways. Repopulating forests, planting neighborhood trees, stop, stopping large-scale logging are popular strategies to offset or reduce carbon emissions. Okay, yeah, it's good to do those things. Don't get me wrong. But forests pale in comparison to wetlands' carbon sequestration potential. Peatlands, salt marshes, especially salt marshes, and other coastal and inland wetlands cover just 1% of Earth's surface, yet they store 20% of our planet's ecosystem carbon, according to new research. Restoring wetlands is a powerful additional tool to combat climate change, said Brian Silliman, who is an ecologist at Duke University, co-author of this current study, that's been published in Science. You see here in this, in this next section, wetland plants hoard carbon. Plants suck carbon from the atmosphere, use it to grow roots, leaves, flowers, so forth. That carbon is released only when the plants decay and the landscapes erode away, or they get grazed upon by animals and end up in the fecal matter where it gets broken down. The intricate root systems of partially submerged mangrove stands, salt marshes, and seagrass metals filter material washing downstream from inland landscapes. The tangled mesh of sediments and plant matter becomes the muddy embankment in which more trees and, plant, excuse me, and plants grow. Around 50% of the carbon buried in these environments comes from this filtered organic material, according to the study. Now, this is an important aspect here, this filtering capability of, you know, marshes and mangroves, etc. They filter out and they can tolerate a lot of uh, pollutants. They do that. They also serve another purpose. Well, actually, a couple. If you've got a whole bunch of marshes there, Inland mangroves, what have you, and you got cyclonic storms approaching the shoreline, they serve as a buffer zone to, to reduce the impact as the storms move further inland. And these such places are important nurseries for juvenile uh, fish, invertebrates, you name it. So these are very important important environmental places, very important ecosystems. And we're losing them. They need to be restored. Peatlands are particularly important carbon sinks. Peat moss, primary ingredient in many boggy wetlands, grows as mats of spongy plant material. Older peat is buried beneath the newest sprouts and in the submerged, low oxygen environment, hypoxic, Sluggish decay locks in thick mats of carbon for millennia. Basically creates the conditions where you don't have uh, microbial actions breaking it down and doing what? Releasing carbon in the form of CO2 and methane. Wetlands may be a powerhouse of sequestration and storage, but their limit limited area means they store a fraction of the total carbon sequestered in oceans and forests which, you know, are the world's biggest sink, mainly because, you know, they're big. Nevertheless, a wetland's greater carbon density, that's the key, on a density basis, they can hold more carbon. This right here. Removing a patch of it has a bigger impact on atmospheric carbon than removing a patch of forests of the same size. Around 1% of wetlands are lost each year to threats such as construction, farming, sea level rise. With the loss of these environments comes the release 
of their stored carbon, accounting for approximately 5% of annual total global carbon emissions. So you lose 1% and it results in 5% accumulation, additional accumulation of carbon in the atmosphere. Goes to show you how much they hold, how much carbon they hold. And uh, Peter Kareva, who's a conservation biologist and president and CEO of Aquarium of the Pacific, he states that um, although regulations to minimize wetland loss exist, we haven't been as aggressive as we could be in restoring them. And part of it is because we've underappreciated their importance in the climate crisis. Well, time to get at it. But like anything else, there's always going to be pressure because we need more land to house people because we have more and more people on the planet. Not sustainable. But we do need to have wetlands and more of them. So restoring, protecting, rebuilding wetlands can be global grassroots strategy. Policymakers need, you know, they need to think about this and start implementing this stuff. So how do you offset carbon? You plant the wetland, get a huge bang for your buck. Five to one sounds like a pretty good bang for your buck, I think. The new study also suggests a change in the approach to wetland restoration efforts. Traditional conservation practices focus on limiting negative interactions among plants and their environment. Silman said, uh, Silman said, people plant over small areas and maximize spacing between individual plants to avoid competition. That's the wrong approach. Isolated plants have little protection from storm surges and many are lost during planting efforts. Restoring a wetland in this way is also expensive. So basically it sounds like increase the concentration. Emerging research suggests that mutually beneficial interactions among plants and their environments are crucial to their survival and to maximizing their prospect of a carbon sink. Planting wetland grasses in clumps gives them a better chance to survive because they're more protective and the restoration costs also go down, especially as success increases. If you firmly establish a bunch of patches, they sometimes just spread on their own and you don't really have to plant any more seedlings. So, wetlands are very important in drawing down carbon. And when we lose 1% of it every year to various human activities, it adds 5% to the atmosphere. It's a five to one loss. We need, we need more wetlands, plain and simple. So will it be enough to offset uh, all the exponentiation going on? Probably not. Could it help? Sure. But with all the lag effects, with all the exponentiation happening, you might put a little di a dip in it, but we have to try it, don't we? So, wetlands, very important ecosystems. We'll talk soon. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.